Ladies and gentlemen, your first comedian coming to the stage is the host of his own serious XM radio show. Please show a lot of love to my man, Dean Obidala. Keep it going for the greatest, Alan Spears. Funny man. You guys sound great. Uh, thanks for coming out. Have, we have a lot of New Yorkers here tonight? Yeah. I live here a few years. I love New York. I love the fact that it's actually fast-paced. Everyone feels it. I was on the bus, true story, recently. Guy in a suit and tie, paying his bus fare, takes too long. At this moment, a homeless guy on the bus screams out, come on, I got things to do. <laughs> this is the city we live in. The homeless have things to get done. You guys are like, look, buddy, at 2 o'clock, I pee on things, okay? 5 o'clock, we got shopping cart races, so let's pick it up. I also, I live here now for like 10 years. Are any of you still shocked by things New Yorkers say of the New Yorkers? Like, I am amazed. Like, we have a new nickel. Some of you have probably noticed it. Have you noticed it? Thomas Jefferson head grotesquely big. It's a whole different look. <laughs> I'm paying with a new nickel at a deli. This is literally the conversation I have with a New Yorker. He takes my nickel, I swear to you. He holds it up to the light. <laughs> he stares at me. He stares at the nickel and he goes, buddy, come in here. He goes, did you make this? <laughs> like, I'm counterfeiting nickels. Like, I'm the world's stupidest counterfeiter. I'm not making $10 bills or $20 bills. I'm my little apartment, I'm minting change. I get a conveyor belt and smelting equipment and liquid metal from my Terminator movie in there. But I thought of this, what if I did counterfeit change? No one's tried this. But to break even on this dastardly scheme, to make for everything in nickels. Be known as nickel man, like fanny packs of nickels around me. Walk in the store, like how much is that? Like a hundred bucks, I just pour nickels onto the tin. If I go to a strip club and throw in change at strippers. I'm gonna make it rain change, baby. I only throw lefty, righty's mean. Lefty says daddy didn't hug you. I'm just trying to help him. <laughs> just trying to help. So people from all over, people from other countries here visiting us here in New York City? Woo! Some people, are you enjoying it? No. no. <laughs> are you here legally? Yes. That's all that matters. I don't care, people are obsessed with immigrants. I saw this guy on CNN, outrage in Utah, true story. He's on TV, he goes, there are 1,300 illegal aliens living in our state. Someone's gotta do something about it. I live in New York City, there are 1,300 in my apartment building. <laughs> And I don't care, welcome to America, my friends. Yeah. Immigrants work hard. My dad's an immigrant, my girlfriend's an immigrant. We had a hurricane, Hurricane Sandy, everyone remembers this? Every American restaurant closed. What was open? Chinese restaurants. <laughs> How do I know? I look at my windows, there's a Chinese delivery guy, I know on his bicycle delivering food because somebody ordered delivery during a Category 5 hurricane. Okay, I ordered delivery during a Category 5 hurricane. <laughs> And there he was on his bicycle and he's pedaling and the food's in the basket and the wind's blowing. And he's just like a Chinese E.T. Just pedaling. <laughs> Coming in to bring me my, you guys like Chinese food, right? I love Chinese food. You guys like Chinese food? Now, this is true, New Yorkers. Some Chinese restaurants to save money were not serving chicken. They were catching pigeons off the streets of New York and serve, exactly, gross, but I thought about it. I've eaten so much Chinese chicken. I've probably eaten tons of pigeon and enjoyed it. So my reaction's different. I used to see a pigeon, I'm like, dirty bird. Now I see a fat one, I go, hope they catch that guy. <laughs> like, like, I go out tonight, I see a flock of pigeons, I call the restaurant, they're like, delivery? No, pick up, get down here. They look delicious. <laughs> if you see an old Asian man feeding pigeons, he's not nice, he's food shopping, that's what he's doing. <laughs> immigrants work hard, my girlfriend's an immigrant, works so hard, she's from the Middle East, she's Arab. I got her on eBay. Uh, <laughs> She came with free shipping, that's horrible. Don't even laugh at that, sir, how dare you? Oh, she's lovely, she's from the Middle East, she's Palestinian, she's an actress, she's doing pretty good. She was on Broadway play, she was in Homeland a couple of seasons ago. And even though she's Arab, they didn't make her play an Arab terrorist. She played the wife of an Arab terrorist. It's baby steps. And she does commercials and voiceovers. But there's one place, sincerely, just because of who she is, she'll never get hired. Anybody ever listen to relaxation tapes? You guys know what they are? Very calm music, very soothing voiceover. It says things like, breathe in. Breathe out, you have nothing to worry about. Everything's going fine, that's soothing. But she has an Arabic accent. And Americans won't relax hearing, breathe in, breathe out. You have nothing to worry about. Everything's going according to plan. It's funny because you're racist, even the black people are laughing. That's not funny. So I'm of mixed heritage myself. I'm half white, half not white. Although I look like a white guy, I get it, sports coat. Uh, very white looking. My mom's Italian, which is the white side. Any Italians? We have some Italians here tonight, I'm sure. The rest of you maybe can relate to being Italian. Have you been to the Olive Garden? Do you want a tank top to a job interview? Anyone? 
My dad's side's Arab. That's not white. I'm Arab. I'm Muslim. It's just great being Muslim now, folks. Oh my God, I could use a hug. <laughs> Every day, my white friends ask me questions like, why do Muslims do this? Why do they do that? I don't come to white people and ask you about the worst things white people have done. I don't come to white people like, what's up with mortgage fraud? What's up with school shootings? Crystal meth, Justin Bieber. Now, it could be more challenging to be Muslim in America. I'm an optimist, I look at the bright side. It could be more challenging if they gave hurricanes Muslim names. That wouldn't help. Turn the news, Hurricane Mahmoud is coming. Run for your life, Mahmoud's a killer. Pick up the paper, Mahmoud killed 30. I'm like, oh, I have an uncle, Mahmoud. This is... <laughs> now, the flip side, like for me, I do look a white guy to most people. And there's good and bad. I'll be br brutally honest. The, the bad, though, is that since I don't look like an Arab, people have no problem saying horrible things to my face about my own heritage. And some people, you probably have experienced this. You don't have to be white to, to, uh, Arab to know this. This really happened. I'm in a laundry mat in New York City. TV's on. Guy goes to me, hey, buddy, see these freaking Arabs on TV? I'm like, yeah, he goes, I got an idea. Let's kill them all. Let God sort out the good and bad ones. I'm like, sir, that's not nice, I'm Arab, because you don't freaking look it. I'm like, well, that just makes it easier for me to achieve the goals of my mission. <laughs> the mission of comedy, folks, mission of comedy. I'm spreading joy. Now, the good side of looking white, I never have a problem at the airport. Like, I have my Middle Eastern friends, anybody Middle Eastern heritage, my friends have problems all the time. And, and the worst is they'll go to the airport wearing shirts, like with Middle Eastern writing, like Arabic writing. No, here's my advice. If you have Middle Eastern friends, here's my advice. No problem with the airport. Remember this expression. Dress white, make your flight. <laughs> Dress white, make your flight. Dress brown, never leave town. What's white? Like many of you, I'm talking khaki pants, a polo shirt with an animal, like a tiger, alligator, no camel, no camel. And if you have a Middle Eastern accent, throw in words from other languages when security talks to you so they don't know where you're from. So security's like, where are you going? He's like, where am I going, mon chéri? To see my mamma mia, I have a fajita, mazel tov. Like, this guy's a genius. I've done a lot of shows in the Middle East. I've done comedy over there. It's remarkable. All the American chains are across the Middle East now. McDonald's, KFC, Starbucks. The only American chain not there, I actually think it's good for them it's not there, Target. <laughs> so nobody wants a bullseye in the word Target on the front of their store in the Middle East. They don't want some guy in ISIS going, what are we supposed to blow up today? Oh my gosh. It's a super Target, Habibi. This is very, very good. That's crazy. <laughs> but there are more and more Middle Eastern people, more and more Muslims in the country. And one day, like right now we have Barack Obama. I like Barack Obama. He broke the barrier, the color barrier, but the barrier for anything. So I can dream one day, maybe there will be a Muslim president. Not right now, many, many generations from now. <laughs> but I hope it's not like me. I hope it's like one of my cousins who like moved, just moved to America, like open shirt, gold chain, smells like lamb. <laughs> so it's like, everybody, I'm your president, Mustafa Mahmoud Abu Sayyid al Masri. But please call me Mike. <laughs> I am so happy to be present every Friday half price on falafel, just like I promised. <laughs> and now it gives me great pleasure to introduce my lovely first lady and my second lady and my third. <laughs> Only one lady. Well, thank you guys very much. I really enjoyed it. And you guys are a great crowd. Enjoy the rest of the show.